Hello, Raider Nation. Mr. Monticelli here with our next Raider Talk podcast. Really excited to talk with Nick Provenzano. Nick, say hello. Hi, guys. So, uh, so I'm sure all your buddies will know who you are, Nick, but for some folks, you know, some people at Minerva here that might be listening and might not know who you are. So share a little bit about yourself, please. Like uh, what grade you're in and what you, what do you do for fun? Yeah. So as Mr. Monticelli was saying, my name is Nick Provenzano. I am a junior at FHS. Um, I enjoy math and science. I play football and baseball. Um, three words that would describe me would be serious, quiet, and kind. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I would share, you know, my connection uh, with Nick is now I'm the principal of Minerva Deland. Very proud of that. I used to be an assistant principal at the high school. And I help out on the football team as a volunteer defensive line coach slash helping out with the offense. So uh, that's my connection with Nick and the football team. And really, really uh, happy to have a strong connection with you, Nick, because you're a very insightful guy. Yeah, that's a real uh, I got another question for you. Yeah. But what you just said kind of is interesting in the sense that you said you're a quiet guy. You are a quiet guy. I am. Ooh. I am. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I am a very quiet guy. A lot of people would find that true about me so <laughs> so why how do you muster the courage to do like a podcast now let's be honest there's not going to be a million people listening to this but you might <laughs> have 50 maybe even 100 people that you have no idea who they are listening to this so where do you how do you go from quiet guy to podcast guy um so i learned throughout the years that it's okay to be uncomfortable um you should be comfortable I, you should be comfortable being uncomfortable and I actually learned that from you, Mr. Monticelli. So I kind of factor that into my brain and we just go from there and just focus on like being in the moment with you and just having a good conversation with you. So that's awesome. Well, uh, I'm flattered. Thank you. <laughs> one of those, uh, you know, I picked that up from some, somebody or something else and you're picking it up. So it's, uh, it means a lot. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Is it simple, but uh, such a powerful concept, right? You got to stretch yourself, whether it's physically, in the workout room, emotionally. Uh, you say, oh, I, I don't know. Should I go introduce myself to that person? Well, what if they, what if they, what if I get rejected? What if they think I'm lame? What if they yeah. post about me on social media? Yep. Uh, or just be comfortable being in that weird, uncomfortable place and say, hey, how's it going? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you, that's a cool shirt. I like that band too, you know, so <laughs> whatever the situation is, you got to stretch yourself and, and get uncomfortable a little bit. For sure. That's a great point. Sure. So for the people listening to get to know you a little bit better before we uh, get more specific in our conversation, uh, what would be your walk-up song? So for athletes, this is like, if you're walking up to, if you're walking up being introduced to a crowd, whether it's baseball or a boxing match, or if you're a non-athlete, if you're being introduced to a crowd, let's say you're giving a, a speech to an aud a auditorium full of people, and as you're walking to the stage, what's like a 30-second song clip that you want you want to be introduced to? So I had to put some thought into this one. Um, I would say it would be Tom Sawyer by Rush. And nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, just the whole. The, actually, you can honestly pick any part of the song because it sounds so cool, but. Any 30 seconds would do. Very cool. Do good. <laughs> yep. Rush. Well, that's a Canadian rock band from like the 80s, 90s, huh? Yeah. Um, my dad listens to them and my uncle listens to them. And I just caught on and I I just started listening to them too. So and that's my favorite song that they make. So that's awesome. Very cool. Uh, with the connection with your dad and your uncle. And um I, I'm finding that more and more lately. Maybe I'm just getting old, but there's a lot of teenagers that kind of connect with like 80s, 90s music. There, there's not that many out there. Most of them are listening to rap, and I don't, I don't really, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really like rap that much. So I'm, I'm okay. like an old, I'm an old school guy. You're, you're a unicorn then, Nick, in that <laughs> Sure. That's super cool. That's super cool. Um, I would have to say, if I was getting introduced to an auditorium full of people, it would my walk up song would be. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, Voodoo Child, the first 30 seconds of that song. Yeah, I've... You, you got you got to play it. You got to mess with it and go listen to it. Um, okay. The guitar yeah. intro is probably the, one of the most famous guitar intros ever. I'm sure if I've listened to it, I'm sure I've 
heard of it you, before, but absolutely a thousand percent. Uh, it's just a really cool Hendrix is a unique, uh, he's yeah. one of the best, probably the best guitar player of all time, yep. but he utilizes oh. like this wild free spirit, mm -hmm. but it's also a complete control over his guitar, which is really a cool paradox, you know? Yeah. I, I just, it's so, it's so fascinating to me, like how these guys can just play away and without like messing up, they got to practice for like 10,000 hours, at least the discipline before. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hendrix is unique in that regard, too, because some people are perfectionists. Well, they're practice, practice, practice to make sure it's the same every time. Mm -hmm. But Hendrix, they yeah. say, even like the best guitarist would say he's the best because he never played the same chord twice. Right. So he would play the same general song, same general concepts, but he would be creative and, and unique and kind of living in the second or living in the moment. Um, yeah, that, forward, but... that, that's awesome. That's really cool. For sure. Uh, so I want to talk to you specifically, Nick, about how you're handling like this COVID weird world, right? With school, with sports, uh, you know, I know you're a huge, big athlete where a lot of your life revolves around football and baseball and basketball. Um, and school, the routine of school is so important for everybody, you know? So how are yeah. you doing yeah. with COVID life? So, um, when we shut down in march i think it was like march 13th the mm -hmm. first the first two months be, like the first two months was pretty much a joy ride nothing was going on like i'm pretty sure this was like for everyone too like all my friends were all happy and we were all good and and then i got hit with some pretty tough um anxiety and the whole month of may and june was just really tough for me i couldn't i didn't really feel like doing much um but i got help and i'm feeling a lot better now so I think COVID has impacted me be, like in a way that like I've never really felt before. Like this is a global pandemic. Like it's, it's just never, it's never happened before. And um, we just have to deal with it. And I, the way I dealt with it, I feel really good about myself. Um, yeah. Wow. You said so much in a few words. You know, um, number one, you said you just had to deal with it, you know, and that's yeah. a huge concept. Yep. It's kind of like uh, procrastinating or putting things off is so easy to do, you know, um, mm -hmm. but it just makes things worse. Right. So trying sure. to say, okay, recognize and okay, we got to, we got to problem solve this or not even a problem. It's like a solutions based idea. It's like, okay, there's a solution here. Let's, let's work yep. through it. It's yep. kind of like if you spill, if you spill milk in your locker, Right. And you say, oh, man, let's say you spill milk in your locker on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. And then you like, hey, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. We're going yeah. wherever. I'm like, OK, yeah. I'll just I'll clean that up later. <laughs> that's disgusting. You come back Monday. And it's like, ooh, that's, that, that's pretty rancid. Right. So you then yeah. you leave it alone. It's too nasty to clean it up. And you use your, your your friend's locker for a couple of days. <laughs> and eventually the custodian's like, hey, man, there's something rancid coming from Provenzano's locker. What's going on? Then yeah. I, you know, principal's got to go figure it out. Mm -hmm. And you open it up and it's like a science experiment, right? Yeah. Where you could have gone back in time and just say, hey, guys, give me 30 seconds. Get a paper towel, wipe it up, and it's all good. So yep. a very um, long-winded uh, visualization for just deal with it, right? And things yeah. get better. You said but, something else, too, where you recognize that, you know, you're a tough football player, but you recognize that you needed to get help, right? Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, you, you can, you can. Right. Uh, I think for a lot of people, admitting that they need help or being vulnerable is really hard, but yeah. it's one of the most important pieces to being resilient. When you think resilience, you think, oh, be tough, get through it, rub some dirt on it. Yeah. But one of the biggest uh, ways to grow resilience is to ask for help and surround yourself with people that have your best interest at hand that can guide you in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so one of the things that I admire about you, Nick, is your courage. Um, a, again, because you're having this conversation, you're a quiet guy. It's like being are on a podcast. Uh, <laughs> but also, I've got a story about you when you were a sophomore. I've shared this story before. So folks that aren't football people, bear with us for a second, because the, the moral of the story is courage. So when Nick was a sophomore, we were scrimmaging against Canandaigua, and this was about two years ago. 
Canandaigua was a really good team. They had a really good, really a championship caliber team. Their defensive line was like yeah. a swing to the team. They had a bunch of like 6'3", 220-pound. Like, they looked like they were 25-year-olds with beards, right? Yep. Uh, and we were in a scrimmage, and we were they were manhandling our offensive line. And in a scrimmage setting, like the coaches are in the sideline, they're right behind the play so they can hear everything that's being said and done. And one of the kids, the best player on the other team was a real loud mouth. He was throwing, like dominating our offensive line and talking smack. And I remember myself getting annoyed and upset, like, okay, is somebody going to be competitive and shut this kid up, right? Yeah. All of our offensive linemen couldn't really handle him. And these were seniors, juniors, uh, and Nick was a tight end at that time. So for yeah. the people listening, he was like 170 pounds probably. <laughs> no, I was, I was 180. I wasn't 180, side. maybe. 185. <laughs> maybe soaking wet. Maybe soaking wet. <laughs> yeah. But this kid was like probably 230, 240, senior. He's a really good, really good athlete. Uh, and Nick, I see him. He wasn't even playing the same position. He's a tight end, which is like kind of like a receiver. And he's like, Coach – Put me a tackle, please. Tackle was a position right across from this kid. So I said, okay, thank you. Finally, somebody that wanted a piece of, you know, competing with this kid. Yeah. And Nick went in and held his own, you know. The, yeah. You know, um, that, the was, that, that was a really, really cool time for me. And so, so talk to me about that moment of courage where a lot of people that are sophomores and they see their senior teammates getting, you know, beat up by this senior uh, superior athlete, what in your mind said, I want a piece of this. I want to compete with this guy. Um, well, usually for someone, um, that like trash talks a lot, that doesn't really last. So I wanted to, I wanted to face him and I wanted to be, I didn't want, I wasn't going to say like, Hey, you got to stop. I wanted to show that in my playing. So and what I did was I just got lower than him and I hit him so hard. And he was just like, Oh dude, like what the heck? And it was just like, it was fun. And it was, I would, I mean, it was like, um, it, it was just, it was just really, it was just really fun to get after it with him. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it's again, I think it goes back to your earlier point, like be comfortable being uncomfortable. So it's an uncomfortable yeah. concept to say, well, What's the worst that could happen? This guy runs over me, <clears throat> and I get yeah. embarrassed in front of yeah, everybody. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And then I go back to being a tight end, which I never did. So, and I'm glad I stayed at the O line. Right. So instead of thinking like worst case scenario, think best case. Maybe I, you know, believe in myself and give it everything I got, and you know, hold my own. You know. Yep. And you can apply that to any situation in life. If you're not an athlete, maybe it's music, maybe it's a relationship. Um, but take a chance, believe in yourself, and, and, and go and get after it. You know, yep. and don't be afraid of the worst case scenario. Try to focus on best case scenario. Yep. Um, this leads me back to uh, a specific question I have for you, or concept. Um, I know you're a, you subscribe to like uh, you know a mental mindset, and you know thinking about your thinking. You asked me, you called me a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago and said, coach, I'm doing an assignment on focusing on what you can control. Right. And yep. I think that speaks to like everything going on right now. People get perseverate and worry about things. Out of their reach. Yep. Yeah. And they watch the news every day. They see COVID numbers going up, um, you know, social unrest in the nation, in the community. All right. And that can be a lot. Or just being overwhelmed with homework and man, I'm, I'm a, I usually have 80s and now I have a 60. Just yep. being overwhelmed with life. So, you know, what, what about that idea of focusing on what you can control is meaningful to you? Um, so if, if I were to like ponder on everything out of my reach, I would be very just, disappointed and let down like the entire day the entire week um for example so over the summer i was on a baseball team um i played for grow to pro and so like in eighth grade and ninth grade we were 
we were pretty solid. We won a couple tournaments, and this year we just completely just fell apart. Um, I would say I, I think we didn't win. We only won like probably like six or seven games out of 30, so our record was, what, 30 and 25 or something like that. Um, and so in the beginning of the season, like I was just my me and um my teammate Zach Merlo, we were just upset and we were upset at the guys because it felt like they they didn't want to be there. Um, but I would say half halfway through the season, um, I just said to him, "Look, we can't we can't do anything about." the other guys not wanting to get better. We can just, we just need to focus on ourselves and try to lead by example, by doing what we can do, like hitting off the tee, doing extra throwing practice, um, like hitting in the cages, just doing things that show the other guys. And like, by saying like, Hey, look, like we're trying to get better. Do you want to do the same thing or, or not? So, and it's completely their choice, but if we want to win, we got to do the things that requires winning. Mm-hmm. Uh, a great, great example. I think that speaks a lot of people can, even if you don't play baseball, um, can apply that to their own life. Uh, you know, I think what you said at the beginning really stands out. It's if you focus, if you focus too much on the things out of your control, it's a sad, depressed existence, right? Yeah. You focus, you dwell on the negatives. Yeah. And that's all you, you can't, you can't get anything done and it leads you to procrastinate and, sloppy and it's messy and it's just not good absolutely um well said i think the other piece of that is you had a game plan right where it's like okay you went from the the mindset of i'm not gonna focus on the negative like these guys don't want as much as i do but they're still on my team yep so how do i make the most of this without creating a toxic situation and just start yelling at them right yeah um and instead of just thinking about it you had a game plan so you found somebody else that was like-minded and yep. you started like every day you had a plan. Like we hit the cages, we do this. Um, I think for everybody can, and for me, my life, having a plan, writing it down and executing your plan one day, one moment at a time is huge where it shows you're focusing on that one thing that's right in front of you instead yep. of all the possible things that are out there, you know? Yeah. That's very, very important. Yep. Absolutely. Um, one thing I try to do, and I'm ha working on my, my children to do this, my whole family, we got a family calendar, right? And usually it's like stuff for the day on there, but I've really worked hard at having the kids write down their goals for the day. Yeah. And it's funny seeing like, you know, like 11 year old, nine year old and why it's six, you can't even reach the calendar. And my daughters <laughs> are helping them write it down. Yeah. And it's like usually a picture of a dinosaur. <laughs> it's the whole idea of well, if you write it down, it's just the, the you made a commitment to yourself, right? And you have yeah. a focus. And if mm -hmm. you like, uh, you know, if you get carried away where you think, well, this assignment's supposed to take me an hour, and it's taking me two hours because I'm distracted or perseverating and unsure if I should submit it, look at your goals and say, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta hit the second goal. So this is, this is gonna have to be good enough. I gotta move on. Yeah, uh, there's just, there's just a lot, there's a lot more clarity when you write something down and you can get it done quicker like you were saying absolutely for sure for sure uh, anything else nicholas any questions for me um was there a time when you got upset or were up disappointed and like controlling what you can control mm, yeah uh, a lot i think <laughs> um out of this for the sake of brevity and the, the anybody that is still listening to this conversation um yeah so very similar to you i was in college playing football and i my senior year in my college career my whole life was revolved around football my dad coached yes. my brothers played so like when i was a baby and walking i was playing football you know yeah the so senior course. year in college similar to you where my team wasn't good we went from Division two, division one. So we were playing at the highest level in the country, but my offense was really good. I played offense. We were scoring 30 points a game, but our defense was very young and overmatched. So we were losing games like 38 to 35. Uh, and I got similar to you, very upset. Uh, it was like the fourth game of the year and we were 0 and 4. And I started thinking negative thoughts about we're not going to win a game. 
getting mad at the younger players on defense because they weren't doing their jobs. Yes. Yep. And I started thinking negatively, and I remember vividly, it was after a game at UConn. We were in Connecticut. My parents made the trip. My brother made the trip. My aunt and uncle and my cousins made the trip to the game to support me. After the game, I was so upset about losing and stuck in my own head. I didn't even really talk to them and visit with them because I was yeah. being selfish. Yep. And my dad let it go in the moment because I was so ticked off, you know, and I was in the locker room. I was crying like <laughs> a mess, you know. Yeah. He sent me a letter like three days later. I remember being in my college house. I, it is weird what you remember. This is 20 years ago. I'm old, but <laughs> You're I remember old. sitting there reading the letter and he said a few things, but focus on what you can control. And that totally made me upset that I disrespected my family by not talking with them in the moment, but also refocused my energy and mindset to, okay, like you said, I'm going to pick up my, my younger teammates, try to make them better in practice and focus on my one eleventh in football. That's my assignment, right? How yep. can I'm going to be the best center that I can be, and which was my position at the time. And I ended up having a, a very good year in the team. We didn't win a game. We finished 0 11 <laughs> But I found the joy and the struggle and the discomfort, and we had a, we had a good time together. So yeah, long story, true. but a very similar concept. But, again, even if you're a non-athlete, you can apply – the same concept to focus in on the little things one day at a time, write down your goals and don't let, let the things fall. Let the things drop that you have no control over. It's like the um, Beatles song, let it be by uh, Paul McCartney. That's a great yeah, song. For sure. Yep. Let the things you can't control be and get after the things that you can't control with, with a plan, right? Think about it. It's almost even good to separate it, right? You can start writing things down, like make a list of the things that are out of your control that are in your mind make a list of the things that are in control of you have control over and then make a, a, a specific plan for each day to attack those yep. things. Yeah. Visualizing. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. What? No. Yeah. Visualizing and writing things down helps me and I'm sure it helps a lot of guys out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Last question for you. You're a junior. Um, but I really feel for the seniors right now that are missing out on a lot of experiences, whether it's, play, musical, band concerts, sports, you know, game seasons. And I've got a lot of – I'm in a Minerva Delam freshmen that are struggling with high school. Their first year in high school is a COVID year where going from middle school is hard to high school because it counts. The grades count. The work is harder. Yeah. So they're experiencing that, but they're trying to do it two days a week in school and three days at home, so it's even harder. So – what advice would you give a senior that's stressed out or depressed about missing out on experiences? And similarly, a freshman that's struggling through their first year of high school being a weird COVID year that's kind of overwhelming. Okay. For the seniors out there, I would say um, be I mean, it's kind of hard to be focused on like your classes and stuff, but you're going to, I feel like you're, a lot of you guys are going to miss your teachers. And when you're there at school, appreciate the time that your teachers are giving to you and that are trying to teach you because um, they love you guys and it's really special. And I think that if you made a connection with a lot of your teachers, you would be a lot happier. Um, I know it's, there's not that much to do otherwise, but if you make connections with your teachers, it's truly really special. And for the, uh, the freshmen, um, that's, that's kind of tough because the transition from eighth to ninth grade for me was, I mean, eighth and ninth grade was probably my two best years and I can't really imagine how it would be at Minerva, but the same thing, like if you're having a tough time getting your grades up and, um, you're, feeling overwhelmed go go talk to your teachers go talk to mr monticelli he would love to talk to you um just don't be don't be i know coming from me um don't be quiet um it it really does help if you get your voice out and try to connect with um your your teachers and other people your age too uh 
Couldn't I couldn't have said it better myself, Nick. Very concise, but so powerful. Again, this speaks to everything we talked about comes back to the same common thread, like hitting it head on, like taking um, addressing whatever the, the solution, the problem solving is right. Trying to address it instead of letting it sit and procrastinating, procrastinating and just trusting and building relationships with people and reaching out to them for help. Right. Say, hey, I'm yeah. struggling. It what just makes it. It makes it so much easier if you have a good connection with the teacher and instead of just like saying, Hey, I need help. It's mm -hmm. Like if you, if you talk to him or her before they'd be like, they'd be able to help you even more because they know what's Absolutely. going on in your life. For sure. Let's say you got a, somebody that doesn't have a good connection with a teacher. What would you advise them to do? Hmm. Um, Sure, we can edit this part out. Um, <laughs> it's all good. It's all um, good. Let's see. The same rule applies. They need to reach out to somebody. So let's say they're just they don't see eye to eye with a specific teacher. Who could they reach out to? They can reach out to a friend, and that friend can help, can then help them get get them connected to um, maybe a counselor or um, a teacher. I don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Sorry to put you on the spot, but you did great. You hit a home run. <laughs> Thanks. A hundred percent. You got to surround yourself with people in general that have yeah. your best interest at heart. If if and you're if you're getting home, if you're going home and immediately going to your room, nothing nothing good will happen. And I've learned that from experience. Over the shutdown, isolation is pretty tough on your brain. So try not to be isolated that much. Absolutely. Reach out to somebody, whether it's in person, if you can't do that uh, through a screen like this, we're having a great conversation using technology, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, Nicholas, I appreciate your your voice and having a conversation with you as always and uh, putting yourself out there once again, d demonstrating some courage to put yourself out there. And if uh, for the few people that listen to this, I'm sure they're going to take value in hearing your perspective because it, uh, it's, it's very meaningful, even you thank made you. a difference for me today, so I appreciate that. Thank, thank you for having me on. It was really special. My pleasure. My pleasure. Have a great day. And Raider Nation, have a great day. Focus on what you can control one day at a time. Make a plan. Take care, everybody.